today we're going to speak about uh, a brute force feature engineering. Uh, um, I, uh, I don't really like the, the clickbait mentality going on today, so uh, the point comes first in this talk. Um, uh, basically, uh, I took a data set, extracted all possible feature combinations by brute force one by one, and uh, the result is that uh, apart from finding the optimal features, which is not surprising at all, you can get pretty good results really, really fast um, by random subsample features. And this is the takeaway of, uh, of the talk anyway. All right, so to the talk itself, uh, two words about uh, who uh, are we, because uh, people are interested. Uh, we are deep trading. Um, our name is not that unique. It's pretty easy to guess what we do. Um, uh, in, in the lens of PhotoML, uh, we really think that many of the tasks needed to develop machine learning applications can be completely automated. Not all of them, but many of them. Uh, we implement this concept at uh, high scale for trading. That's it. All right. So in this talk, uh, we're going to do the following. We have the main experts, and we would like to take their jobs away, pretty much. So. Uh, a little bit of notation. Uh, I'm going to say uh, many times interaction features uh, in this talk. Basically, what I mean is taking two columns and applying some sort of operator between them. Uh, I'm going to say a lot uh, uh, group by aggregation or aggregation features. Basically, it means going uh, group by group, um, taking and doing some sort of calculation on that group alone. Right? And the operators that I'm going to talk about is those. All right, when I'm saying operators, I mean those things. All right, so apart, leave trading aside for a second. Uh, suppose we want to solve the following problem uh, from Kaggle 2020, Women in Data Science. Uh, the data is as follows. Uh, we have nearly 100,000 patients uh, from uh, ICU units uh, across uh, multiple countries. And uh, we have uh, many medical features. Um, our goal is to predict whether or not the patient survives or not. Um, more about the data, uh, uh, which makes it, uh, more about the things that make the data uh, good for this setup is that uh, I think it, it was even written by hand and then typed to a computer because the quality is as poor as you can just get from the data set, which is good for this problem. It is small enough, it's not small, but it's small enough so we can go crazy and do full brute force. And it has many, many hard problems uh, data science-wise, such as categories only in the train or only in the test. And it's, it, it makes it really, really challenging. So finding uh, really good solutions out of the box for this kind of data is really challenging. And it's not going to be a piece of cake where automail is just going to blow it out. All right, so feature engineering. Just to give you an example, how deep the main knowledge in this data set is really important. Um, apart from the winning teams having you know, actual doctors in the teams, just look at the features themselves. You, can, you have weight, you have height, you can calculate BMI, which is really specific calculation, but we all understand why it's important. And uh, for aggregating features, we have things that, we have measurements that are taken uh, one hour uh, after the patient arrived to the ICU. And uh, we have uh, other measurements that were taken one day uh, after the, after the uh, patient came to the ICU. If we count the non-values in both, uh, well, as it turns out, it has information. How on earth? Well, as it turns out, if you think about it, the fact that you had gone through a test means that the doctor suspects that you have something, which means that the fact that the test exists in the data set is not missing, has a lot of information, which is extremely, extremely specific. We would like to find those things that you just saw automatically by brute force, trying all the all combinations and filtering those stuff out, right? Okay, so the problem in general goes as follows. We want good features that's gonna yield better model performance, um, but they require deep domain expertise. Oftentimes, we are not the ones who hold this domain expertise. And sometimes we don't even have any access to someone else who does have it. And from here, it only gets worse because suppose we do have the domain knowledge that is required for the problem. We also need to have the good ideas 
uh, when we work in order to actually use this domain knowledge. It's basically saying we need to win the lottery in order to uh, have a good uh, machine learning model. All right, so can a question arises, can we just try out all possible features and just keep the best ones? Maybe we can extract domain knowledge out of the data automatically this way. Um, all right, so the brute force setup is gonna go as follows. We have a lot of columns, we have a lot of operation, and we are searching for triplets or, uh, or, uh, or. anyway, we are, we're searching for, for a group of features and an operation to perform on them. And we are gonna measure uh, the cross-validation performance of the model. By cross-validation, I mean the following. Uh, we are going to go uh, stratified k-fold way, take the data set, splitting it to uh, multiple folds, and uh, train a model, measure its performance on the out-of-fold validation, and average out the metric. I have a lot to say about the number of folds and, and uh, whether or not to average the metric or take the pure CV metric, uh, but uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I'll leave this aside for a second. I'm just saying that if you're interested, it is it can change the experiment dramatically. So you, you need to look at that. All right, so the algorithm for this is gonna go as follow. For each feature selection method, train 1.7 million models for every possible combination of features and operation in the data. All right, so why this madness is actually really important. It is, it, it, it's, it's worth, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, millions. Uh, I tried to estimate once how really, how much really it's worth, and, and I really got really, really fast to hundreds of millions. And, and it's really simple, simple to understand why. It basically shifts the cost of everything from human to compute, and compute cost is much cheaper. And uh, it, it also makes, uh, if you have a good feature selection, it also makes the whole pipeline cheaper to use because you, know, you don't need a lot of compute and not from, and it's faster, it's better for everything, right? Um, okay, so what operators are we going to use? Again, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna skim through this fast. Um, for single variable transformations, we're gonna use this, the simplest thing you can just imagine, nothing fancy, nothing special. Uh, we are also going to include discretization, uh, taking uh, numerical features and splitting them to categories uh, to create categorical features. For categorical features, we're going to use all categorical encodings you can just think about. And for multi-columns, uh, for date and time, we're going to extract date, month, years, quarters, etc. cetera. Um, for interactions, we're going to use all, this, all the simple uh, math uh, operations, uh, nothing too fancy. For aggregations, we're gonna go uh, and, and group by each categorical feature whatsoever and uh, use all the aggregations that uh, uh, comes with pandas. Uh, we also included uh, uh, a harmonic mean and, and some other, but you get the point. Um, for text, uh, we're going to use uh, met features like number of words, number of unique words, stop words, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of them uh, because of uh, time constraint. And we're also uh, going to include some uh, other more advanced uh, feature engineering techniques into the brute force and see what we come up with. All right, so can't we just, for, for actually selecting which features uh, from the brute force we wanna use, can we just use feature selection, feature importance? Like we're gonna train trees anyway. So if we just use the feature importance, well, the short answer is no. Um, I tried that, uh, I actually, uh, run this experiment uh, 43 times until I got to a solution that actually beat the first place on Kaggle. And uh, I tried feature importance and I tried every feature selection method that you can just come up with, right? Uh, there is a little bit of formalism here and uh, why feature, why it's really hard to do feature selection on this uh, problem. But in short, uh, it's very tempting to look at feature selection here as knowledge discovery. Like we run this thing and basically we extract the domain knowledge out of the data automatically, right? Well, it's not correct because uh, if you have a subset of features that uh, uh, yield the model, that maximize the model performance somehow, and you have another subset of features that maximize the model performance and you get to uh, the same model performance, but the features are different, 
which can happen. Uh, I'm not going to go into this because I've really short on time. Um, it's not true that you can say about one subset, the only thing you need to know about to predict whatever you want is this, 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 and that, because you have another subset, which is pretty much answering the same question. Okay, it's a little bit formal, but I'm not going to go into this. Uh, in short, what we're going to do is maximize the performance of a, a trained model uh, through cross-validation. The model itself, we're going to maximize the model performance itself. Um, what features are we going to encounter? Some features are not going to be informative for any model. Those we can determine that are irrelevant. Some features are going to be uh, important for all the models, which are, we are going to say that they are in, indispensable. But some, which is the most of them, sometimes will appear, sometimes will not appear. These are most of the features. We say that these features are replaceable. There is a theory behind this, if uh, you're interested, but those are really hard to pick, uh, to pick for the final model that we're actually going to run after the brute force. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this. I just want to say that uh, most of the feature importance from all the models that you are used to, uh, that uh, the features that are replaceable, uh, uh, the importance distributed among the replaceable features, uh, pretty randomly, it's really hard to know which one uh, is actually important for the final model. So we need the, an algorithm that can get the full multiple feature selection returning all possible solutions. And because such algorithm doesn't really exist today, so we are just gonna go with the easy brute force approach. Okay, back to up and let's run it and see the results. Basically, what we wanna do is run uh, Three uh, three hundred forty four thousand something something features, uh, feature combinations. Um, for each one, we, we are going to run one point seven million models, and all of this is per iteration. Okay, so that's uh, that's a pretty crazy setup, uh, brute force. Uh, so uh, say say hello to uh, my little friend. Um, uh, you know, at, at 2020, uh, many businesses uh, had to close, which is really, really sad. Anyhow, uh, we got some uh, coronavirus discounts for acquiring uh, other uh, stuff. Anyway, so uh, we put our hands on a data center, uh, which, uh, which we closed. Uh, we bought all of it, just acquired everything. And uh, it came with a max total of 8,192 CPUs. Um, uh, we are currently in the process of equipping it with our own custom mini CPU uh, PCIe board, which is going to boost the whole setup to uh, nearly 40,000 CPUs. So for the brute force, well, bring it on. All right. So as the results, uh, uh, it, took, uh, it took around a week uh, for, for all the iterations to complete. It's not surprising that if you try all combinations whatsoever on a supercomputer, you can get the perfect results on Kaggle. Yeah, it's not surprising. What was really surprising, for me at least, that really fast, you around 2% coverage of the feature space, you get to 10% the top of the leaderboard, which is incredible. Basically, it means that you can run for a couple of hours on, on, on your laptop. Maybe not on your laptop, but you get a point and get really good results that probably will take you weeks to do by hand. So uh, the thing pretty much hints that brute force, brute force feature engineering, well, it's not feasible to run brute force for anything, but random features from the subset of features that we just saw can be really useful for other problems. You can get really good results really fast. And um, we use this, by the way, uh, all the time, uh, things uh, of this sort. And another important thing that uh, I wanted to share with you guys before I finish up, uh, the most important feature types, I'm not going to go feature by feature, but the types themselves are interaction features, uh, mainly categorical interactions. It should have been written in the presentation anyway. Um, these are the most important, followed by uh, frequency encoding, uh, then grouped by aggregation of uh, var, uh, harmonic mean and mean, right after rank, rank-based features, which you go on like pandas.rank, something, something. And uh, then uh, the simple uh, group by aggregation, maximum, minimum. And then you have a long list of many features, but these are the top five. Okay, in summary, 
Automated feature engineering can be used, uh, even if uh, you don't believe it, can be used to increase the model performance. Uh, it can be done by calculating random features uh, with this. If you have a strong feature selection algorithm, feature selection itself is very tricky to get right. And uh, permutation selection, uh, if you're looking for a go-to method, is a good feature selection method. And feature selection uh, is not knowledge discovery. Uh, it's tempting to say that, but it is not. But it can also be uh, very useful for insights.